upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament reading from Revelation Sunday is from the first chapter 21. From Mount Horror, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go, to go around, around the land of Eden. And the people, the people became impatient by the way. And the and people spoke against God and against Moses. Why, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die, die in the wilderness? For there, For there is no food and no water. And we, we loathe this worthless food. Then the, then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they, and they bit the people. So that, so that many, many people of Israel died. died. And the, and the people came to Moses and said, We have, we have sinned, for we, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray, pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed, prayed for the people. And the Lord, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he, when he sees it, shall live. live. So, so Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would, he would look, look at the bronze serpent and, and live. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm not finding my graduate. Um, um, the the official reading. Is, is from, from James, James chapter, chapter 1, verse 22 and 27. 27. But, but, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, be deceiving yourselves. yourselves. For, if For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being, Being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed, blessed in his doing. If anyone, if anyone thinks he is religious, does not, not write with his tongue, but deceives his heart, his heart. this, this person is religious is worthless. Religion, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to, and their affliction, and to keep, keep oneself unstained from the world. This, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, God. In that, that day you will ask, ask nothing, nothing of me. Truly, truly, truly I, I say to you, whatever, whatever you ask, ask the Father in my name, name he, will he will give it to you. Until, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask that you, you will receive, that, that your joy may be full. I have, I have said these things, things to you in figures of speech. The hour, the hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that, in that day you will ask me my name, and I, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father upon your behalf. For the Father, for the Father himself loves you, because, because you have, have loved, loved me, and have had me that, that I came from, from God. I came, I came from, from the Father, and have, and have come into the world, and now, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples, His disciples said to him, Ah, now, now you are speaking, speaking plainly, plainly, and not, and not using figures of speech. <laughs> Now, now we know that you know all things, and do not, not need anyone to question you. This is why, why we believe that you came from God. God. Jesus, Jesus answered them, them do, you do you now believe? Behold, the hour, the hour is coming, and he has come, when you, when you will all be scattered, each to his own home, and will and leave me alone. Yet I, Yet I am not alone, for the, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the, in the world, world you will have tribulation, but take, take heart. heart. 
I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. You know, you know, it's one thing to speak about, about joy. But we, but need, we need to understand where that joy, true joy, joy comes from. Once, Once we understand where true joy is found, then true joy is there. But it's, it's not, not like the type of joy the world thinks of. It's not, it's not the type of joy that has you walking around with this goofy grin on your face all day long. Because you still got to deal with the world, don't you? It's still out there. We still, we still live in hard times. We live in a sinful world. Where's, Where's the joy? joy? Well, no. the, only the only thing, thing we, we know we really need is Jesus. Jesus. 
And that's what we need to look for joy. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 tells us that joy, the joy that we speak about in all the scriptures, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Well, now it's starting to make a little sense, doesn't it? Joy isn't something that I can go out there and find for myself. Joy isn't something that I can do in my heart that I can sometimes convince myself is the way to be. Joy is not one of those things that if I don't have that grin on my face all day long, it must mean I have a bad relationship with God. What it means is that joy, joy, true joy, 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 joy that passes, passes all understanding, understanding like, like peace itself, itself that we speak, speak about, about, the peace of God, God that passes all understanding, understanding. The, the joy, joy of God, God that passes all understanding, is found in Christ Jesus himself. Peace. There is, there is no worse in it in your life. There is, there is no coercing it into, into your, your heart. heart. Joy, joy cannot be measured. And joy, joy cannot be invented for yourself. You can't, you can't simply, simply decide, decide that, that today you will be joyful. joyful. Joy, joy, Luther says, is, is where Christ, Christ is. And again, again, we have that he presented, presented to us. We find, we find joy as, as we look to Jesus. Jesus. And, and particularly as we look at his life and all, and all that he's done for us. And when, and when we, we contemplate, contemplate these things, something wonderful, wonderful begins to happen, happen in our hearts. We understand, we understand what true joy, joy is all about. We find, we find joy, joy throughout, throughout the scriptures. As I said, I said before, before, it's found everywhere by, by name, joy. joy. But sometimes, so sometimes we read through that Old Testament and we, and we see about these incredible stories of God, God dealing with the sinful, sinful world and the people, people he loves. loves. We, we sometimes, sometimes sit back, back and think, where, where's, where's the joy? joy? We think, we think about, about the Israelites in Egypt. In Egypt. And we, and think, we about think about those poor Egyptian mothers who during, during that, that play lost their firstborn. And we and focus on where the joy is at. And, and we, and we look, look at the flood. And, and we find billions with a B people dead. And the heart of that is a feeding frenzy. And eight people. people in an art. And we, we think, think where, where is joy in that? And as, and as Israel occupied the promised land underneath the, the general Joshua, Joshua. And, and destroyed cities and people, and, people and, and livestock, and we, and we wonder, wonder, where is the joy in that? But we're, we're all looking in the wrong place, place aren't we? Today, Today we go to a funeral and we look down at the body of our loved one and think, where is the joy in that? We look, we look at our congregations and we see them beginning to empty out, out and we think, where, where is the joy, joy in that? But there is joy. True joy. For even back in those Old Testament, Testament times, the joy is found that God, God did not wipe out the human race in the flood. He destroyed evil. evil. And he, and he brought, brought eight faithful people, people through that ark to a new beginning. beginning. And that there is joy. Because God, God works through those means to bring about the salvation of his people. The salvation of the crown jewel of all of life. You and me. And as he deals with evil throughout the Old Testament, we don't, we don't focus on those things. We focus on the reason why. It's because, because God, God wants to serve his people. To keep them safe, to keep you and me safe from the attacks of the world, of the devil, and of our sinful nation. Because where Christ is, where his salvation is found, that's where our joy is at. It means that as we stand 
we pour that coffin and we look down at the body, we as Christians can experience something in our hearts that no one else can. We know joy. We talk about it with reference. We talk about it in terms of, well, our suffering is over, but it's more than that. It's a guarantee that that person has now crossed the Jordan, has entered into the promise of heaven God, and their joy is to the fullest for that person. And eventually, someday, you will be there with them. And eventually, God is going to bring us back to life to experience his joy forever. And that is only because of Jesus Christ. We look at his life and the opposition that he faced and the suffering he went through on the cross. And I want to show you something, people. As you look through the scripture, joy always follows heartache. The heartache of Jesus dying on the cross is there for our joy that he rises again and lives. That's your joy. That joy that is found as you kneel before a manger and look down at a little baby. Not with a halo around his head as you see in the pictures painted. Not with a smile on his face and hands up and down. But as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a stinking manger with smelly shepherds. And there's joy. Because we know that that child is a source of joy for all nations, for you. And as we kneel at the foot of the cross and we look up and we see the broken body, bloody, savage body of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, we know that ultimately it is a source of our joy. There are two times during the church here when we particularly focus on the cross of Jesus, one is on Good Friday. There we remember, as we look at that body, our sins there. It says, Romans says, I, that Paul says to Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We look at that cross on Good Friday and remember, it's our sin that took us to that place. It's our sin that put us there. But then there's another day, Holy Cross Day, for which this congregation is named. Where we look at the cross and Jesus crucified as a sign of our victory, as a standard that we raise high before the world because it's the only source that's going to give you any kind of joy in this world. And as we stand there at the empty tomb with Jesus, that joy becomes even fuller even more prominent for us. Because we know that as He lives, we live. And Romans chapter 6 speaks about that in terms of our baptism. That we have died with Christ in baptism, but we are raised to life with Him by our baptism. And you as the baptized children of God, know that joy. You stand there with Jesus, and we celebrate that resurrection every Sunday, and particularly now during this time of the year. And coming this Thursday, you know what happens this Thursday, don't you? You know what we celebrate. It's the ascension of Jesus into heaven. The ascension. Where one who is human is now ascended and sits at the right hand of the Father. In our nature, the God of man, Jesus, ruling from heaven, and that gives us great joy because we're reminded that along the way God takes us with Him. We know the joy that is in the Lord Jesus Christ because we see His life. And we know that we are united with Him in that life. And nothing will separate us from Him. I ask you, brothers and sisters, are you filled with joy? Do you know the word of God that speaks of the love that he has for you and the joy that that brings? Do you understand that every time you open that scripture and read of this story or that story, that it ultimately is pointing you to that Jesus? Many people don't in our world today. 
many whom you know, your neighbors, your friends, your family, your loved ones, your co-workers, the people you sit next to today in the classroom, who don't know that joy of the Lord, who all know it is very real joy, is a very subtle one. The cry for joy is so great in our world today that our own synodical president, Matthew Harrison, has written two books that I would commend to you for your reading. One is entitled, A Little Book on Joy, The Secret of Living a Good News Life in a Bad News World. What an amazing thing. He takes us through many instances in his life as a pastor where joy should not have been there, and yet joy was there in the person of Jesus. The second is entitled, Why I, Why Am I Joyfully Luther? Introduction, Meditation, and Prayers on Luther's Small Catechism. Where again, he takes us through Luther's Small Catechism. that you're all familiar with. And he shows throughout, even in the things like the, the Ten Commandments, where true joy is found, where true love is present, where it is all bound together in Jesus for you. This is the joy that we all need. This is the joy that the Lord has set before everyone. And it is this joy of Jesus that drives us to bring that joy to others. It was that which drove Philip to speak in joy to Nathaniel about the joy that he found and said, come and see. It is the same joy that drove Andrew to find Peter and to tell him the same, come and see. Do you know that joy? Do you want that joy for others? We have the example of Nathaniel, of Philip and of Andrew, and a word that is shared, so that hearts might be converted, not by you, but again the joy of knowing that it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we invite others to come and know that true joy with us. A joy that is found and continues in the one who has loved us, who has died for us to take away our sins, and has rose from the dead and ascended into heaven to give us eternal life, that we might be with him forever. Here is your joy. Amen. Now may the peace of God pass us all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. I could buy it everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by adult Bible study and Sunday school at 10.30. You're also invited to join us for Vespers 
and catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.